welcome back to Black Unicorn Vlogs. Well, this is the first episode of my Kenya series. As you guys know, I spent some time in the countries in East Africa, on the continent of Africa, and I'm going to be sharing that with you. So in this episode, I'm going to the Kenyatta International Convention Center, which is not just a convention center, but also a tourist spot, because you can go to the top of the tower and be able to see a beautiful 360 skyline of the city of Nairobi. This is the Kenyatta International Convention Center that has the rooftop that you can see on top. I need to put on my mic. doing things, seeing people walking down. Let's see what else is over here. So I put out all my stuff. Put out all my stuff so I can film this. So if I go up, you can see the building. All the way up there. You can see me in the building. People driving over here. waving her flag high and hard she like she so i hope you guys enjoy taking this journey along with me remember i make these videos um to educate you but also so that i have these memories for my family this is not free at all i spend good money to do this and i'm not sponsored so if you guys want to support my channel please feel free to do so through super chats, super stickers, super thank yous, or whatever the thank you thing is in YouTube <laughs> or Cash App. Um, but thank you guys for joining me and just experiencing Africa with me. International Convention Center rooftop. They charge 500 shillings, uh, Kenyan shillings, uh, if you're a non-resident to come up here. I don't know how much it is for residents. I don't know if they have to pay at all, but if you're a non-resident, a tourist like me, you pay the 500 shillings only via credit card. I've noticed all the tourist sites here are cashless. Even to catch the train, cashless like you're either going to use your digital money mobile money which is in pesa which i don't have because i don't live here or you're going to be using um your credit card so i use my credit card pay for 500 came in chilies which is about i don't know two dollars yeah it's like a dollar 90 or like euro 92 um if you're using euros and they have a lot of uh broken in places um, but you can get good shots of the city like this is a nice shot as a matter of fact let me take pictures it's a big city so there's another part here there's steps so I'm gonna pull up these steps and see Let me just try to stand to the side. <laughs> Tight quarters. Wait till you get to the spiral stairs. 
Yeah, oh, there's a spiral, okay. <laughs> yeah, walk around, this isn't it. You gotta walk around, think about the spiral staircase. Oh my goodness, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so there is a whole section that you walk across. They have little, like, I don't know, messages, sayings on here. I'm going to read the part when walking up steps. So it is what it is. Uh, this says that my downtown Nairobi is in the shape of a triangle. Most of the skyscrapers and major government offices are centered inside of three borders. Who are highway to the west, the railway station to the south, and the Nairobi River to the northeast. Okay, that's interesting. Look these steps. Look these steps. I'm about to walk. I'm about to walk up these steps. Gotta get some more. It's about to be. It's about to be interesting. I don't even like heights. I'm being bold and brave. Evan's gonna be looking at me like I lost my mom. <laughs> I'm trying to be bold and brave and not freak out. Oh my god. Look at this. This is what it actually is. Okay. Clearly, this is where it's at. Good boy. Now I understand why everybody's up here. Now you can see Nairobi from the rooftop. <laughs> me and my bag <laughs> are here, but you should be able to see it behind me. Yes, I can see it. You know what I'm saying? And this is the Nairobi city skyline from the helipad on top of the Kenyatta Center, International Center. I'm gonna go around slowly so that you can see it from the other end. I took like an hour and a half worth of footage and broke it all the way down to less than like 30 minutes. So this is a little long, but it shows in detail what I saw through my eyes. And I don't know, I just thought I'd share it with you all. So yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.
visit all of the tourist sites in Kenya, not just Nairobi, but in Kenya, you have to use their online um, system. And I think it's the e-citizen system they have in um in Kenya, it's the same one you use when you apply for the when you apply for the e visa, whether it's the one entry e visa into the country of Kenya or you're doing the um, multi entry inside of uh, various countries in East Africa. So that's called the East Africa visa. I did the East Africa visa. I say this because almost all of these tourist sites want you to go back into that particular app and pay for your admission into any of the tourist sites. Now, I was lucky at the time that their credit card machine was going through some issues and I couldn't, um, like it, it was something on the website basically, and I couldn't um, pay with my card. So they did take my um, 500 shillings and it was, I think it was 500 shillings, um, maybe a little bit more because it was customer service week. So they were allowing everyone to get half off on the tourist location. Um, and this is one of them, I like the, the pricing, um, but they take their currency for um, payment, but you can use your credit cards to pay for your tourist sites when you get there. Um, I didn't realize how industrialized and how <laughs> more advanced Kenya is, in particular Nairobi, than many Western cities, especially in the US. Um, I don't know how Kenya is still called a developing nation because the cities that I went to are fully developed. Nairobi is off the chain. Like you might as well be in like any Western city in the world because that's what you're getting here. 24 hour electricity, 24 hour fast speed internet. You heard fast speed internet. Yeah, <laughs> they ain't playing with y'all. They ain't playing with y'all and highly educated population, right? There's a lot of tech companies that have um, kind of like a hub in Kenya because there's so much talent there where they don't have to train people because people have already been trained correctly so they can hit the ground running and learn and be able to do um, any of the particular type of tech jobs that might be there from programming to cloud to security whatever never meant to go this far behind your back I was quite a trap there's no Um, so I really enjoyed Nairobi. I will definitely be going back with my husband um, because he hasn't been to Kenya. So it would be a nice for us to go together. Kenya is perfectly set up for tours. I mean, it's set up so well for tours. There's so many things to do. Just be mindful when you go to Kenya that um, some of the activities require for you to like book in advance like you have to schedule it out before you go you can't just show up like this they have like this elephant sanctuary i can't remember what it's called elephant wildlife something it has a whole name you can't even go to this unless you schedule an appointment and you're supposed to schedule your appointment a minimum of i don't know if it was a week or two days before you come 
<laughs> I even though I knew I was coming to Kenya, I had no idea I had to schedule things in advance in order to be able to go. So hopefully this could be helpful to some of you who are going to others who want to go. Um, Kenya is a great place to visit solo as a solo female traveler. Highly recommend Kenya. Great to visit as a family or a couple or friends, tour, whatever. Uh, I think anybody will have a good time in Kenya if you're coming out of the West, especially if you're not used to a less developed type of areas. Because this, Nairobi, <laughs> Nairobi didn't come to play with y'all. This is a fully developed, industrialized, westernized, not even westernized. They have their own type of feel to it. Um, but there are a lot of different cultures and cultures in here because you have the Kenyans and their various tribes. You have the Indians that have been there forever, pre-colonial, right? So they're integrated completely in society and the Arabs. So you know what I mean? Like there's a whole different cultural dynamic happening and everybody's speaking Swahili. Yeah. <laughs> so I was taken aback, shocked by a lot of things that I saw, pleasantly surprised by the things that I saw and just excited, right? Excited because I don't know why, I'm gonna keep harping on this. How people are calling Nairobi in the country of Kenya as a developing country, I don't understand. Have you been on their train? Have you, you know what? I'm going to take y'all on. Y'all going to see what the train is like too, because I have a whole episode coming on the train that takes you from Nairobi to Mombasa. And there's a couple other like towns and cities and rural areas in between. Child, <laughs> ain't nothing developing about that. <laughs> ain't nothing. Okay. It's, it's nice. It's nice. Anyway, thanks you guys for joining. Sorry about the rant. Hope you guys enjoyed the city skyline with me. <laughs> Even though I'm scared of heights, I went and did it anyway. All right, y'all. Bye. Okay, I'm outside of the International Convention Center, the Kenyatta. I am not mic'd up, my mic is dead. My, my camera is about to be dead, but I just wanted to get some shots. I wanted to say a few words, because if I'm not close to the camera, you're not gonna be able to hear me. So look at these great shots of the Kenyatta Center from the opposite side in which I came in. I think I came in through the back. You guys enjoy spending a day with me in Nairobi, seeing a few things I saw, and um, yeah, it's been real. Uh, first time visiting Kenya. <laughs> it won't be the last time. I'll be back with my husband. All right, let's go ahead and exit. I'm gonna put all my equipment up before I walk out the door.
That's 